Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. If you're involved in a collision, your car or your pickup will usually be towed to a body shop for repair. Your visit to the repair shop can be as scary as the original accident if you have no experience getting your damaged vehicle repaired. You may be angry that you must take time out to deal with the problem. You might be upset that your beautiful car has been disfigured. You may be concerned with the out-of-pocket expense. Today we'll be discussing vehicle repairs following an accident. Norman Beck, owner of Southside's All-Star Collision Center, formerly Burien Southside Auto, has decades of experience in the repair industry. He's here today to answer questions about dealing with repairs during a stressful time. Norman Beck, welcome to Conversation. Thank you. So, uh, we were talking off camera about a number of things, so we'll just get right to those and put them on camera. Um, one thing I said to you was that there are reputable shops like yours, mm -hmm. and then there are some disreputable shops where people are being taken, uh, just taken. L let's talk about what is it that people should be looking for uh, in terms of they've had an accident with their car, they need to have some repairs. The, sometimes your insurance company will recommend from a list. Correct. Right? Other times they don't, and it's up to you to pick out a place. What is it that people should be looking for? Well, I think as a consumer, when you're picking out a collision shop, you want to make sure, one, that they have access, that they've been in business for quite some time. Um, two, that they have some type of a warranty uh, that's, you know, that they can carry with the car as long as they own the vehicle, uh, that they keep you updated in the process, and then they take care of you from A to Z. Uh, when the vehicle is, is, is wrecked. What should this warranty say approximately? Uh, it should, uh, the warranty should be uh, for parts, labor, um, paint work, any type of things like that that they've worked on, uh, you know, so that it's back up to pre-crash position uh, once the vehicle is repaired. So that if it's not, you can still go back there? Correct. You've got a warranty that's in your hand that comes when, when the vehicle is repaired with your final bill that will, you know, that you can carry with you. So that if you do have defects or workmanship problems down the line, you can take it back to that shop and they'll take care of those problems. You said that they should be in business for some time. What, what do we, I mean, yeah. I mean, 30 I mean, years? Are you talking about five years, yeah, three you know, years? I think, as, I think they need to be in business for a, a period of time or at least have the experience. You know, I don't want to sit here and say that, you know, if it's a new shop, don't go there. I don't want to say that because that's not really proper. Uh, but, you know, you want to check, you know, you want to check, you know, uh, with the Better Business Bureau. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, they have reputable people, that their technicians are ICAR trained and ASC certified. Uh, if they are doing work for insurance companies, uh, if they're a direct repair, and and direct repair program is uh, basically uh, I have XYZ insurance company and um, this collision shop does their work for them mm -hmm. and, and you you kind of want that and the reason I say that is is that they're under a different they have a lot more guidelines for that insurance company mm -hmm. to do work for them so, so if I come to you and I say I, I'm with USAA mm -hmm. okay now you're in a different state of mind right because are you the guy that does the appraisal for USAA, or do they send out a, an appraiser? Uh, depending if you're a direct repair or re program, yes, I would be the gentleman that would actually write the estimate for USAA. I would take the pictures, I would do all of it through electronic or uploading it through the computer system, and I would do everything from A to Z. Mm -hmm. I would set your rental car up for you, um, you know, all of those things, keep you in contact. Uh, most insurance companies are going to, are starting to, um, we text. We email daily, uh, letting you know, take pictures of the vehicle while it's in process so that you can look it up at night and say, hey, oh, well, you're the consumer. You're the, the consumer. owner of the car. Yeah, or you're talking about the insurance no, company. The owner of the car. Uh -huh. uh, so that you can look it up and go, oh, wow, my car's in. Uh, it's, it's, you know, and again, sometimes you know, they see it with the parts all off of it and they go, wow, that's my car. But then they'll see the next pictures where the new parts are on and the next stage where it's going to the paint department, so on and so forth. So eventually it's in the detail and they're picking it up. So, yes. Mm hmm. So then, uh, again, people should slow down, take a little time, even though they've had an accident, to make sure that the job is going to be done right. Correct. And, and, and be honest because with you. Because you could wind up, what's a, what's a, 
I'm sure you've heard of horror cases of people having to come to you after the fact. What are some of these horror cases like? Um, you know, you, sometimes you get a customer in that's been to another collision shop and, uh, you know, they, they didn't get any communication and their car was going to be done in two weeks and they called and it wasn't going to be done for another week and then they call again it's not going to be done for another week and then it comes back and they finally get to pick it up and the, and the car wasn't cleaned right and the body lines weren't you know right and the paint doesn't match and you know uh, it started out at, at a certain amount and now it's a whole lot higher they didn't know that and it just, you know, there's a lot of different things, so. Now they can't get that car out of there without making some sort of payment, right? They just can't come to you to make it right. Correct. So I mean, now it's costing them not double, but. Well, not so much double, but I mean, you know, every, most collision accidents, you have a deductible with your insurance policy when you, when you go with your insurance company. Right. They're gonna be responsible for that deductible. Uh, some folks uh, that have rental, uh, you know, car rental, you know, maybe for only so many days, you know, 20 to 25 days. Once that's up, you know, then now they're responsible or possibly the body shop will take care of that. So I, I think the biggest thing for consumers to know is that when they're in an accident and, and they've taken it to that shop and they've had the, check, and the shop kind of checked out or they've been asked or they've been given names of, hey, this is who we recommend these shops and they pick one of them. Um, that that shop communicates with them and lets them know every process, such as you know uh, you know the shops that I'm familiar with. You know, as soon as the vehicle comes in, we disassemble it or blueprint it, as it's called in, you know in, in the collision industry. Uh, we disassemble the vehicle to make sure there's no hidden damages underneath anything. Once that's done, if there is, we write the supplement up. We contact the insurance company, uh, and then when that's done, then we we let the consumer know that hey. We disassembled your vehicle, we found there's a lot more additional damages, and in doing so we're going to be ordering parts, and this is going to of course back up the process. You know, so instead of it being done in 8 days, it's going to be 13 days or 14 days. Mm -hmm. And then also the insurance company is, is known as well, which helps them with their rental. You know, keep, mm -hmm. So keeping, keeping your consumer updated is a big thing. Well, it know, also sounds like your insurance company, who your insurance company right, makes a big difference. Right, because they're paying, I mean, yes, you're paying your premiums, but I mean, they're, they're paying the tab at the end of the... But they're also monitoring the process. Yes, sir. USAA, which I've had for many years, yes. military insurance, Yes. Um, that it, um, they help, and, and they also guarantee Yes. They, guar they guarantee me. They not guarantee. You. Yeah, not they guarantee. Not the, not the body they, they guarantee me that everything's going to be right, and it's going to be right from then on. Correct. That's why they have such high standards when they're dealing with uh, yes. with various shops. Now, what about? And I'm sure you have seen television advertising for you know. Well, call one eight hundred auto insurance. You know, call us up and we'll get you in now. We'll. <laughs> Do those kind of companies work as well with the customers after the fact? When it comes, when, when the rubber meets the road, when they've had the accident, are those companies there standing behind them? What has your experience been with that? I would say in the last probably 10 to 15 years uh, and going to now, most insurance companies are where they need to be. Oh, good. Okay. Good. I mean, they, you know, they, they may not be as big as some of the big, you know, the big insurance companies that have been around for years, but most of them are put on a, they have such guidelines that, that you know, they have to do it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that this mean is that monitored you, by the state? Uh, not so much by the state, but just by, you know, uh, you know, uh, the director of insurance, uh, department of insurance. I mean, they're, they're, they have guidelines that are a lot stricter now than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. So they've got to kind of be, on top of their game. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that they, they make mistakes or that a customer had a bad experience? You know, you're going to have that whether it's with the, the top insurance companies, you know, uh, you know, A rated or they're B rated. I mean, you're going to have that, but it's keeping them down to a minimum. So, all right. So somebody's had an accident. They, they get towed into your place. Correct. And now you, you know, you're, you're, you go out there and you look at it. And I believe you just said you do a quick estimate based upon the external damage that you have observed. You write this up. You tell people what you're going to do for them. Correct. Then you are, then your guys get a hold of it. They take off all the parts and they go and they say, oh, well, the, the air conditioner got torn or, or, some some line is broken or something like that. Correct. That's when you add on. Is that is that well, why? Well, depending on the insurance company, okay, it, it depends. If it's X Y Z or USAA, and we are a direct or a pro shop for them, and, and when I'm saying that, I mean that we are we 
do the work for them. So they send their customers to us and we, and we do the work. With most DRPs or direct repair program insurance, you take the vehicle in, if it's towed into you, and we're using that as that, mm -hmm. you bring it in, you disassemble it right then and there. You bring it into the stall, you disassemble it, or at first you take your pictures of it, of course, before. You disassemble it and you write that estimate from A to Z. From every panel that's disturbed or wrecked or destroyed to every clip that's missing or whatever it needs to be done, whether it's air conditioning, the Freon's gone, antifreeze is all leaked out of it, whatever it is, you write everything up at that point. Uh, and then you take your pictures and you upload all of that to your insurance company. Uh, at that point, uh, you get the okays from your customer, uh, you set their rental up for them, and then you start ordering the parts and you bring it in. My experience has been that cars that have been damaged, severely damaged in an accident. Um, after, I don't care how good, how, how good the shop is, they're not like they came out of the factory. I would have to disagree. I can't say that about all collision shops, but at the last ones, the last several, that I, and I've worked at some of the biggest collision shops here in this area and around, um, that all goes back to quality. And if you've got a shop that's high quality and, and they have the standards of that and they pursue that and they make that happen in their shop, you can put it back to pre-crash. So really all, the har all the wiring harnesses are put back exactly the way that they were when they came out of the factory? All yes. The, 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 the proper the, clip, the clip is put back in, not just one that we pull out of a drawer. You know, if it's a certain style clip, that's a certain style clip that needs to go back in it. Mm -hmm. uh, if it had painted stripes on it, the painted stripes are put back in it, not cleared over. Or they put decal stripes on instead. Um, you know, and, and again, I've, I've heard that many, many times. Uh, well, once it's wrecked, it's, it's never the same. Again, I, I probably have owned more wrecked cars than anybody that I know, and I buy them wrecked mm -hmm. uh, just because. And, you know, I drive them until the wheels fall off them. So, you know, it just depends on the proper repairs, that it was done correctly, that it wasn't half-tailed. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right. You can get a bad repair. I'm not going to sit here and say that, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to say whatever shops out there that may be doing it, but if it's a, if it's a quality shop and you've got high you know technicians that are you know I car trained and, and you know you can get that car back to the way it was before. Let's talk about training. What what it, who or how, how does somebody get to be good enough to work in your shop? I would have to say that, and again, you know, uh, I look for schooling. Education is, is a key, at least what for me. Of, uh, you know, there's several. You're talking about like their high school, or you're talking uh, about. There's other some stuff. high schools out there that do collision work, not a whole lot anymore. Uh, it's basically a uh, uh, after you get out of school type training. Uh, I know that. Uh, uh, like going to Vaterot or. Vaterot, or? Rankin Tech. Uh, you know, I, I, myself, I came from Rankin Tech as well. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit partial to them because mm -hmm. I learned a lot when I was there mm -hmm. uh, and even actually taught there uh, for a short time. So, you know, you look for that. You look for uh, is it a technician that um, goes out of his way to get his training? You know what I mean? In other words, he goes for ICAR or he goes for ASC. What is ICAR? ICAR uh, well, it, it, it is a, an organization? It's an organization which most insurance companies will repair or require you to be ICAR certified. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just more training. It's making sure that, you know, they teach you maybe on a Honda or a Toyota certain things that you need to look out for or when you're doing the repairs. Um, you want to make sure that, that these technicians have that. Uh, and then you also, as a shop, you want to make sure that they continue to keep their training updated. Mm -hmm. You never let it lapse. You let it, you know. And most insurance companies, and most of the bigger ones, will require you to have so many points, as they call them, because you get so many points for each class. They'll require you to have so many points a year to keep your certifications for the their, individual, or the shop, the shop as the a shop. whole, to keep your certification with that insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's ICAR Gold, there's ICOL, uh, ICAR Platinum. So you want to get as high as you can, and it's good for everybody because you learn the. Uh, the newest tech, you know, techniques that are coming on the newer cars. You know, the different steels that they use. There's some cars, I know with the Chrysler, there's five different types of steel that are in frame rails and stuff that are, that are made to give it structural strength. Yeah, so, we were talking about this, uh, some of this before we went on the air, so I want to cover some of this. Dings, you know, there, there are, what, dent doctors and mm -hmm. other places like mm -hmm. that. What, what is it that they're doing? to fix just this one, you know, dent or ding. Ding. Well, right now, if you don't know, right now we've had, we had a hail storm back on 428. So we've had hail. Um, most of your paintless repair, or that's what's called PDR, paintless repair, um, 
what they do is they get behind the actual panel where the den is and they use long rods and different things and mirrors and they use lights and stuff and they basically I, I call it massaging the molecules and moving them back out to where they don't disturb the paint so they don't crack the paint mm -hmm. and they basically push it back out man. so you don't just go pop no no it, it's so have it, it's an actual art it really is it's an art uh, and again and it's really changed over the years because steel is not like it was you know, years ago where you could really push on it, push on it and tap on it, tap on it and get it out. Steel's a lot thinner now. And so they kind of, you know, they, they push it around and massage it and push it back out where it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they guarantee that where you want to make sure that if you're having paintless repair work done, that that company has got a guarantee as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and that if, it, if somewhere down the line, uh, you you know, you see a crack in the paint, they're going to take care of it or that the shop is going to stand behind that. Mm -hmm. So. Some, you're driving, somebody stops short in front of you, boom, you've just rear-ended them, right? Now, mm -hmm. it looks like that car is just like, it's got stuff sticking out everywhere. Mm -hmm. What's just happened? Why, why is everything sticking out the way it is? Why isn't it built to be um, better integrity? Well, actually, it, it, the cars are built a whole lot better than they were back, you know, uh, when the steel bumpers were still around for okay. most cars. Um, every car is a unibody. Uh, it has what's called what's, a torque. What is unibody? A uh, unibody mean? is is uh, a structural. It's, it's the way the car is built. It almost looks like if you took all the steel off of it, the sheet metal, the roof, and everything, it looks like a kind of like a spaceship. I mean, it's got your 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 structural steel, your rails, and everything. Well, all of that is built to take impact. Mm -hmm. uh, like your front rails, where your bumper and stuff would hook up in front. This is, this is the lines inside. Yes, these are the lines inside, inside that you don't right. see. All you see is the shiny sheet metal and the bumper <clears> covers. <throat> well, even your bumper covers, all of that is made to take impact. So upon impact, it's supposed to collapse. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to wrap around. It's absorbing the exactly. energy. Exactly, it absorbs the energy. So, so you're uh, not flying through the window. Right, years much. ago when you got in a wreck, there used to be two impacts. There would be the impact to the actual vehicle and then the impact inside the torque box area which you, you've seen a lot of people got thrown out of the windshields. You know, well, that's all, and a lot of that has changed because now when you get the impact, even with the bumper cover, mm -hmm. they're made to take so much of that impact, it wraps around the car. So yes, it crumbles, which is what it's supposed to do, and it protects the people inside the torque box area or the passenger area. Mm -hmm. But, so that's why it looks bad. Because but it's then supposed to do that. It needs a lot of repair, which, which brings you in. Correct. So um, how much in the accident that I just described, let's just say this all occurred at mm, 35 miles an hour. You could have anywhere from 15 to $3,500 of damage, depending on the style of car. Uh, you know, if, if it's a vet, you may be looking at $6,000. If it's a, a, a Chevy Cobalt, you may be looking at you know $2,000. What depends. makes the difference in these prices that you well, just quoted? Well, of course, uh, the, the expense of the car, how the car is built. Not really how it's built, but just the expense of the car. You know, Chevy Cobalt, brand new, is thirteen or $14,000. Uh, a Corvette is $60,000, so there's, you know, the, the parts are more expensive. Ah, and and the there's parts in, themselves. Parts are. themselves, yes. Okay. yes. So um, you, you bring this thing in and you're buying, uh, are these factory parts that you, that, you know, I mean, what, what are these parts that you're, you're getting? Depending on the insurance and their guidelines, okay, you could use uh, OEM parts, which is brand new Ford or Chevy or Chrysler or Toyota, whatever. These would be, be the same parts that, that were stamped on. out that yeah. could have been put on to a brand new car that's Correct. coming down the line. Correct. Okay. Correct. What other kind of parts? Uh, there, there is, the, you know, your, your LKQ or your used parts, which is uh, as some people's salvage yards, um, which are still OEM parts, just, you know, they're, they're, they're used just parts. Just have to be repainted. Correct. They got to be repainted and, you, you know, and, and put on. Uh, and there is the aftermarket parts. Uh, and again, it all also depends on well, now, tell aftermarket. What, they've heard this term. What is aftermarket? Aftermarket are, are parts that are made. Um, a lot of them are made in Japan, China, um, different countries such as that. And they're, they're kind stamped. of knockoffs, right? They're knockoffs. There you go. That's a perfect. That's a perfect way to say it. They're knockoffs. Uh, you know, um, and again, it depends on your insurance. You know company and their guidelines. If they say that we, you know, they want us to require to use aftermarket, then we use aftermarket. Some if, insurance companies do require you Well, to it use? depends on how your policy is written. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say that, you know, the insurance companies are the bad guys. They're not. Right. But it depends on the policy. You know, a lot of folks, when they get an insurance policy through their agent, you know, sometimes not everybody reads the actual policy. As I say, you get what you pay you for. You get what you pay for. You right. know, and, and there's That's always why a, it's only costing you a half. Exactly right. And, and, and again, you know, if I was someone that was going to tell somebody right out of the gate, 
you know, well, I've got a brand new car and I just spent $30,000 on this vehicle and I want to put, well, then you need, as your policy, you need to talk with your agent or your insurance company. And there's an addendum or a, a rider that you can have in that policy that says that you're going to pay a little bit more, but it mm -hmm. automatically states that I'm going to have nothing but original OEM parts put on my vehicle. And you can do that. Again, most people don't know that uh, because they're, you know, they're looking to get it as cheap as they can, and, and that's what happens. But, you know, most collision shops will work with you and try to put whatever you require, you know, on your vehicle. Now, in the accident that I described, the rear end, 30 miles an hour, is there damage to the engine? Depends. I mean, it really depends on, you know, here's the thing. When you, when you hit the back end, did all the antifreeze and everything fall out? Probably not. It, it just depends. You don't, you don't know that. If it collapsed correctly, you know, and, and everything, all the sheet metal and stuff that looks really, really bad, you pull all of that off. The engine is most of the times under that type, everything's intact. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, your radiator may be bad, your fan assembly, which is behind it, and the air conditioner may be bad, but that's all replaceable stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course, you want, the, you want to make sure that you, that's all checked. So if you're talking about like, oh, let's just do a Ford Taurus. Okay. Okay. How much is a new engine? Oh, a new engine, a brand new Ford engine could be anywhere from six to seven thousand dollars or more. It just mm -hmm. depends. So there's new versus now. Can you repair this thing if it if the you're at 45 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, and you've had this accident? There's bound to be more damage. Perhaps the engine itself got tagged. Well, with most vehicles. I, again, as I said back in the beginning, with the impact, it's made to wrap around all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, if, you, if you're hitting something at 60 miles an hour, yes, there's going to be damage. To what degree? I mean, who knows that? But most of the time, the rails and stuff collapse in a certain way and take the impact and absorb it to wrap it all the way around and stay really away from the engine, to a mm -hmm. degree. You know, it may skim this or, you know, break this off or, you know, certain things. But it, they, it, I've, I've, in all the years I've done it, I think I've seen probably two or three accidents where it really got into the motor and we had to do some replacing. And do you do that kind of work? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. Um, what is the definition of it's totaled? Uh, the definition of totaled means that the repairs exceed what the vehicle is worth. The insurance value of the Correct. car. Correct. In other words, it, it, whether it's NADA or, you know, whatever book that the insurance company requires you to use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, you know, they usually go anywhere from 70 to 80 percent. It just depends on their guidelines, again, mm -hmm. and what it is. So, you know, it, it exceeds it, then it's a total. And that's, you know, unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Okay. So now you're running around in this same car, 1993 Taurus wagon. Okay. Okay. All right. You've had this accident at 35, 40 miles an hour. This 93 vehicle has a book value of... 1993, I would probably say it's not worth much more than $1,500. Right. Now, you've got more than $1,500 damage. What is this poor woman who's standing there saying, I got to get to work. How soon can you have this fixed? It's an unfortunate thing, and we don't see it as much as we used to because, uh, you know, newer cars and stuff. But it, it's... You have to sit down and you've got to be honest with the customer and tell them up front that, you know, I'm going to write the estimate, I'm going to contact the insurance company, um, and go, you know, and, and go from that point. If it's a total, with most of your insurance company that you're direct repair with, they actually handle that with the customer. They mm -hmm. kind of take you out of that uh, spot. You know, if it's somebody that's just off the street, you know, you got to let them know up front, listen, this vehicle's got over 100,000 miles on it. You know, it, 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 you know, it's worth $1,500, but we've got $3,500 worth of damage it's not repairable, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's a bad thing. We got five minutes here. Just want to okay. let you know. Okay. Um, so <coughs> in fact, for those who don't know the, the routine, if they have an older car that is insured and has collision insurance on it, they're thinking that their car is going to be back out on the road at some point. But reality is it's not, is it? They're just going to hand them a certain check for the for that fifteen hundred dollars that you quoted, correct? Maybe a little bit, it, maybe it, a little it, right. more. It, they there's might a, there's a lot maybe of maybe two thousand dollars, correct? But that's not going to have their car up and running, and that's not going to buy them the same kind of car that no. they currently have. No, and that's right, and that's just an unfortunate 
aspect of it. I mean, it, you know, if some and, 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 and folks don't do it as much as they did back then. I mean, there's, I mean, cars really move. People aren't holding on to them like they did. I mean, we don't see many '93s anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, now the oldest they vehicles, they just, they just, you know, they, they went to the junkyard. They went to gone? the junkyard and they're gone. You know, they, they've gotten in an accident and they were, you know, exceeded what it was worth and they cart them off and and that's that's an, you know that's what happens. Right. Um, like I said, we're under five minutes here. Is there anything that we have not talked about that you wanted to say? Um, you know, we, we had hail. Uh, we've had hail several weeks ago. And customer, I mean, most of the consumers have been told, and again, not by fraudulent or anything like that, but uh, most of the hail was figured as paintless repair. Well, three years ago when we had hail, it was a lot smaller hail. So 80% of what we were doing was paintless repair and 20% was probably conventional. And conventional means that you repair that panel and you paint that mm -hmm. panel. It's reversed now. The hail was a whole lot bigger. It did a lot more damage to these vehicles. And now it's 80% conventional and 20%, you know, uh, paintless repair. So, um, you know, you want customers to know that it's taking a little bit longer than it should, but it's just one of the situations you want the vehicle right when you get it back. Because most of these folks are still making payments on these vehicles. You know, they got them for 60 and 72 months. They want it right. So, mm -hmm. you know. And they needed to get to work tomorrow. And they needed to get to work tomorrow. Right. right. And I so think if they if, didn't have insurance that gave them a rental car. Well, and I they tell you They better be talking to a buddy about. And, I, and I, if that was one thing I could tell everybody, most of your insurance companies that you have a policy with, it's not that much to have rental. Yes, maybe you don't. Maybe you're one of the folks that only gets in a wreck every five years, but it seems like that that fifth year when you do get in a wreck is when you need your car the most. That extra twelve or fourteen dollars every six months for car rental is well worth it. In my again, it's mm -hmm. only my opinion. That way you're protected. You've got a vehicle, and you're and you're going to arrange with a reputable sure. rental company yes. to make sure that they have a decent vehicle to go around. Correct. Not rent a wreck. No. No, it's not rent a wreck. We use a lot of companies like Hertz and Enterprise and different companies like that that have you know strict guidelines on what they can do and what they can't. And they usually rent out newer cars. I mean, you're talking 2011, 2012. They got the newest cars around. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been an interesting journey right here. We we still have just a little bit of time, and uh, and I hate to get into anything complicated because right. then we're gonna we're gonna run out of time. Do you do? Uh, you were talking about this hail. And I know in this, by the way, so that people know, we're t right now it's June the 12th of 2012. And this uh, hailstorm you're talking about was like about a month or so ago. Um, a lot of damage to glass. Do you do the glass work too? Yes, if we don't do it, we can actually sublet or we have companies that, we're, that are reputable companies that we work with us that have the glass done at our shop, yes. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of those guys, a lot I mean, of glass guys, we, we have several. I at know the guys shop right that now, you know they 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 had to go out and buy a new car. Basically, it was it the, the damage was was that extensive. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're out of time. Thank right. you very much for uh, coming and sharing your expertise with us. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks very much for being with us, and we'll see you next time.